Hey guys, Alan here with Hauntworks Digital Effects. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create these super cool animated haunted portraits inside of Adobe After Effects. Now I primarily make these for haunted houses, holiday displays, projections, that kind of thing. But I wanted to go over the process that I go through and show you guys how I do it, kind of in brief, just in case you guys are trying to make anything similar for yourself. Uh, it's a very cool effect, and it can be used in a lot of different ways. It doesn't have to be these creepy, rotted characters. It can be something entirely different. I will not be going into a lot of detail here. This is more just kind of an overview of my process. So if you are completely new to After Effects, then this tutorial probably will not be for you. This is more for people who are more experienced in After Effects who at least know how basic masking, keyframing, and things like that work. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so the painting we are going to be taking a look at how it was done today is Lady Jane Baird. Now, in essence, this effect is just fading between two images with a few extra little bits of flare on there. In essence, these are the two files you're going to need, a regular and a rotted version. So let's take a look at how we can make the regular version. So I started out by finding the original image that we are going to be converting into our own. Now this was just a free image, a public domain painting that I found online. You know, it's free to use, no copyright or anything. And it's a great jumping off point for us to get started creating this haunted painting. So I started by photographing my subject, of course, in a, a similar of a pose as we could get. Uh, and paying attention to the lighting. Now in some of these other portraits I've done, the lighting is a lot more drastic. For this one it was pretty flat so I just kept it pretty generalized, but I did a rough sizing to get it to match with the original head and basic rough cropping around the edges. Next up, inside of Photoshop I used the Content Aware Fill tool to just remove the head. Obviously this removed it pretty rough, but it doesn't need to be perfect because the other head will be on top of it. Then I went in and tuned the crop a little bit more um, so that it was a lot cleaner. I also spent some time blending the neck and doing a basic color matching. Uh, so as you can see, that's already starting to look quite a lot better here, making sure to have a lot of focus on blending the two images where the neck meets. Then I went through and I replaced the hair and added a little bit of digital eyeshadow and lipstick. Um, for the hair, I just again found another image on Google, a transparent one of some hair, put that on there, resized it, recolored it, and blended it with the original. I think it just looks a lot better and it helps it look a little more fancy, it's a little more fitting to the time period. Then I did a final layer of color correction. Uh, the biggest improvement here you can see is on the hair, it's matching the darker tones of the rest of the image a lot better. Uh, and I also used Photoshop's incredible oil paint filter. And this does a lot to blend the two images together and make it look like it's in place. So several layers of oil paint filter and some desharpening to get it to look how it does now. And the very last thing to do on this was to use a camera raw filter to finalize all of the color. Just throw a light grade onto it, you know, darkening the shadows just a little bit, increasing the contrast, adding a slight vignette to focus in on the subject. So that's it for the regular version. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can create the rotted version. So to create the rotted version, I first started out by desaturating the skin tones and then overlaying this skull image on top, and then I used Mesh Warp to change the positioning of the eye, nose, and mouth cavity areas so that they'd line up with the original. Then I used this moldy zombie skin texture image that I found, uh, and just set the blending mode to overlay, and then just started erasing parts of the image with a softer brush, rescaling, positioning, rotating all around the skin area to make it look more rotted and gross. And then I also went in and manually painted some hair strokes there to make the hair look a lot more loose and unkempt. Then I went through with another layer of uh, rotten texture. This added some bigger gapes in the skin and just made it look older and more torn. Uh, and then I also added a very subtle collarbone, as you can see there, as well as darkening around the eye and nose cavities and the mouth. The final step was to throw another camera raw filter on there, and as you can see that did a lot to really finalize the look of the image. It went through and I desaturated the image, boosted the contrast, 
as well as darkened the blacks and the shadows, adding another vignette and increasing the clarity just a bit to bring out the grittiness in the image. So now let's go ahead and move on to the animation part. So to start out, I basically just faded between the two images like I said earlier, just using some keyframes to fade between the two. Uh, and then the biggest thing that's noticeable here is these cracks and drip effects. Uh, now these were done just again finding a transparent image on Google and then using the rough and edges effect. And you can see as I kind of move that around here what it's doing, it's making the cracks appear and disappear. So I keyframe that over time to make those cracks appear. Same thing with the drip, uh, just make it so that it will appear over time and look like it is dripping down onto the photo. And I go in and show it a little bit more detail here that again, it is just simply fading between these two images. You know, everything else here is just artistic flair and you can uh, have your own preference there, but essentially all the effect is, is just fading. And then we move on to the eyes. Now all of the portraits have these white eyes that move around a little bit. And to do that, I just found these once again on Google, these white eyes. I had to animate a mask to make them kind of open and close a little bit because if I had just had them simply fade in in the fully wide position, uh, it would look really weird on top of the original painting because Lady Jane Baird there, her eyes aren't wide open all the way. So it looked really weird and it was like crossing over into the eyelid. It just didn't look right. It also gives it this really cool extra layer of dynamic life to it. They widen up and then close back down when we fade back to the original. The last step for this was to animate the eye position. As you can see there, it's a very subtle effect. It is less subtle on some of the other ones, but for this one, it is very subtle. And all I did for that was pre-comp the two eyes and then just animate the position to nudge slightly left or right, uh, making sure to ease those keyframes so you got a nice smooth transition between them and that's pretty much it for this painting like i said it's very simple um, you just have to know how to use the basic tools inside of after effects and for anyone interested this is the portrait of oliver p baird um, i did a little bit more complex animation on this one where you can see he slumps over right there as he transitions into his rotted state and so to do that it was Again, pretty simple, yet um, it was a little bit more complex because I was using the puppet warp tool, here, or a puppet pin tool rather, to change his positioning. As you can see here, I just went through and animated the keyframes for all these pinpoints, so he kind of shrugs down. Of course, I had to separate out the foreground and background, again, just using Photoshop to do that, and that allowed me to animate him and give them this little extra bit of life. It adds a lot of dynamic to it, um, and it's not that much more complicated. All right, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Again, I know that was pretty brief, and I went over a lot of things pretty quickly. But again, like I said at the beginning, this is just for people who are a little more experienced in After Effects, who just at least know how the basics work. Uh, and hopefully this provided some insight for you guys of just my process for creating these. If you do it yourself, obviously put your own spin on it, use your own effects, make it custom. If you guys are interested in seeing the full pack with all six portraits and all the different versions, including a jump scare version, you can head over to haunt.works. There you can check it out, as well as all of the other digital effects that I create for haunted houses, holiday displays, and projection shows. Appreciate the support, and uh, thanks for watching, guys.